Drama Podcast. Is this the end of our civilization? Prepare for gaming domination. The mightiest monster of them all. Grimlock the Dino 9, Gamezilla. Welcome to the GameZilla Podcast, your last line of defense in major gaming news. I'm your host, Grimlock the Dino, and with me in the GameZilla Media Studios, my producer, my co-host, Butterboy. Oh, come on! (laughs) How long have you been planning that? How long have you been planning that? (laughs) Butterboy! Um, Context. Like like 20 minutes ago. Context. 20 minutes ago. My wife says, come into the kitchen. I just shredded fresh mozzarella. And there she is with a cheese grater. And she takes me just just a little bit. So I just get a little bit off the top. And I'm like, this this fresh mozzarella, I'm not used to it. I'm not a fancy person. I I eat the cheap stuff out of a bag. (laughs) And I know that it's like slimier and gooier. So I don't really think too much of it. And I put it in my mouth and it just melts. And it doesn't taste like mozzarella. And I was like, what is what is going what is this cheese? And then she holds up the stick of butter that was in her other hands. She was just shredding butter because she was baking. And then she's like, How'd you like that butter boy? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I oh, snapped yeah. the prank out to all the boys. You did. You gave now us the everyone's ammunition. calling me butter boy because my wife's like butter ammunition. boy. Yeah. I mean there's worse nicknames to have because Butter is a respectable yeah. thing that makes so, me happy. I mean, my question though is, when is the uh, gamer tag and everything changing over to Butter Boy? Uh, when I get an Xbox, I'll be Butter Boy on Xbox. Will you yeah. shake on it? No, I'm not shaking. Come on, on shake no, on I'm it. not shaking. Come on. First off, I will buy you an Xbox just so this happens. <laughs> I will cash app him too. No, there no, we go. Hey, no, no, shake on it. No, come on. The people, no. the people want to see it. No, right? I don't want to go by Butter Boy. If I ever end up with an Xbox, I don't want to go by Butter Boy. Come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> no, you're thinking about it. I'm thinking about you, there's it. There's an no. Xbox in this. There's an Xbox. Look at, look at Mixer.com, Games on Media. <laughs> People are saying, do it. I'm not doing do it. it. I'm not doing it. Xbox. No. What if it's an Xbox next gen? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, okay. All right, I got something here. If you I need if a you, lot of help here, people. If you buy it, I will be Butterboy on Xbox. <laughs> yes. Oh, I have the power now. <laughs> You've all witnessed it. <clears throat> I love it. All right. <sighs> Man, man, how I like Craig WK and Mixer. He's like, I'm proud that that I have standards. And in a matter of 20 seconds, he's like, Wait, no, because you shook on it. I Cause, love it. Because the, the idea is, how terrible, <laughs> how terrible is it going to be when I'm like, Yeah, you well, you want a game with me on Xbox? Hit up your boy Butter Boy. Like, <laughs> that's going to suck. First of all, first of all, you know for sure someone already owns Butter Boy. So now we're going to have to come up with a clever way to get you like yeah. Butter Boy 69 or it's something It's going to be like, like butt and then her, <laughs> H-E-R boy, butt her boy. Butt her boy. Oh, Bam. dear God. <coughs> uh, anyways, <laughs> welcome to episode 291 <laughs> of the GameZilla podcast. It's brought to you by our patrons. Woo! Nip slip. Uh, sorry, I had to take my hoodie off. <laughs> oh dear, we're banned, and we're banned. I had to take my hoodie off, and we're banned. It was non-sexual, everybody. It was it non-sexual. Was, it was non-sexual. I don't we expect okay. anyone to get on chat and okay give me money for that. Mixer.com/slash/gamesonmedia. Wow, I'm interested wow. how this is going to do Could, on you YouTube. You couldn't now. have walked off the screen for that. <laughs> I was hot now. Yeah, we're getting a strike for that. I know. Microsoft's we're, coming down. We are not getting a strike. Microsoft is coming down. Hey, listen. Microsoft Butterboy is bigger than you. <laughs> Craig WK, don't tell me it wasn't sexual. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God. Uh, well, how many minutes of the show? Four minutes in, it's off the rails already. I've already ruined the show twice over. <sighs> oh, All right. This podcast, the Games of the Podcast, is brought to you by our supporters at patreon.com slash GameZilla Media. Go there today and start your patronage because it goes to supporting our podcast financially and we can continue to exist with my phone leaking <laughs> electronic radiation in the soundboard That's creating good times now. Man, it's like Jesus. It's been two years since I've had a phone that got ghetto enough that it was leaking radiation from the soundboard. Oh, God, all right. So, yeah, we, we need your money. 
because I'm gonna have some sort of horrible from my phone. Uh, so go to patreon.com slash games on the media. With your patronage, you'll have uh, exclusive perks. And very specifically at the $5 a month level, that's where you get exclusive a- access to podcasts from all of our great shows on GameZilla Media that you cannot listen to anywhere else. So head on over to patreon.com slash GameZilla Media and uh, learn more and start your patronage today. Thank you. <sighs> Not only did you go and just throw this off the rails, but then we got our video guy over here, which I didn't even introduce because, oh. because shit went sideways so fast. <laughs> Player One Miggy, our video producer here, if you're watching us live on Mixer.com slash GameZilla Media, Player One Miggy is the one doing all the video work, including all the random videos that you're watching right now in full screen. <laughs> that eye snip just threw me off, you know. <laughs> man. Don't was, blame the nip. I'm over here burning up now. I'm, I'm hot. I wasn't expecting this today. <laughs> oh, man. Woo! Anyways. <laughs> we got some news to talk about. Okay, we're going to actually get into this show. Are you ready oh. with this? Are you, are you staged for the news? Do you I, need some time? I have delayered. I'm wearing less clothes. Okay. Uh, I've talked about how I sweat butter. But you're still wearing clothes, though, right, Butter Boy? Uh, this is actually just green screen out of my body. Oh, I, I came here with green paint on, and Miggy luckily green screened me a shirt. Perfect. All right, well, then here is the news. Yeah, that's the wrong button. <laughs> I'm searching the web for the latest gaming news. Searching GameZillaMedia.com. Downloading headlines. What about this monster story of yours? Download. <laughs> Listen, F2 and 2 are too close together. It's very confusing. <laughs> Keyboard layouts have been are, are way too confusing. It hasn't been the same way for, I don't know, 20 years. Listen, I've been asking you to get me one of those ergonomic split half <laughs> keyboards for a year, and you won't we do it. We haven't been this much of a mess since bit by 8-bit days. I'm just saying right now, we are out of control. You keep telling me they don't make them anymore, and I know that's a lie. Re- reel it in. Reel it in, I Reel it in, butter boy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. We got some video game awards. <laughs> listen, guys, I'm spread a little bit thin today. You are. <laughs> oh, oh, <her> voice. oh! <laughs> wow. Give yourself like a sad trombone or something. That works too. That works too. Your cough is better though, so good luck on that. Yeah, yeah. The, or, or good, I, good luck. Good I, job on that. I invented the cure for tuberculosis in the last week, so good all job. those patrons that paid extra money for my ashes won't be getting them anytime soon. All right. So a few weeks ago, we covered the video game award nominees. <coughs> we talked about um, who was nominated, who we thought was going to win. We're going to cover the winners now. This happened over the last last weekend. We or last week, I should say, and uh, we want to just cover some of the uh, some of the winners, and then also. Um, get into the announcements that happened at the Video Game Awards. So, uh, let's get this. Let's get this underway. Are you right over there? Oh, it's a cough drop. Yeah. It's wreaking havoc in the audience. I was gonna say, yeah, you can hear it horribly. You and you and that like you yell at people about gum, and then that's acceptable. I need this to live. <laughs> Do you want my lungs on your soundboard? <laughs> I want you to enjoy that away from your microphone. Oh, gross. <laughs> LPJ would not be listening to this episode. I, I I don't even know what's going on right now. I literally have no idea what's going on anymore. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna rapid fire through this, okay? We don't need to spend a lot of time, but the winners. VR AR game, Beat Saber. That's what we picked. We were on fire there. Strategy game, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yep, that's what we picked. So we're two for two. Sports racing game. This one I was actually surprised. We uh, we voted Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. It won. Is that what we voted for? What else was in the category? FIFA and then a bunch of other crap we knew wasn't going to win. Oh, yeah. uh, score and music goes to Miggy with Death Stranding. Yeah. RPG, we all got wrong. <laughs> and this was the game that like cleaned up that I had never heard of. Uh, Disco Elysium won Best RPG. Good for them. Uh, first game by the developer. So not bad to, to be going home with multiple awards we're going to be saying uh, here in a minute. Uh, best performance is um, from Death Stranding. Go ahead and say the name for me, Miggy. Mads? Oh, Mads Mickelson. Yeah, there you go. I was giving you the opportunity to, you know, to own up on the fact that your team that your game your game is winning awards, but clearly you don't care because that game's trash. Uh ongoing best ongoing game, Fortnite. Congratulations. Best narrative, Disco Elysium. Ouch. Again, best multiplayer game, Apex Legends. Best mobile game, Call of Duty Mobile. That oh. was 
complete and utter trash. Yeah, the gold the Call of Duty that, Mobile. The fact that that game won that category is is just disgusting. What else was in that category? Do you remember? Uh, well, one of the games, like, there's only one other game that I thought had a chance to win, and it was one that was up for a lot of awards because of just the the, uh, the art style and, and the storytelling. Like, it's one of those games that didn't expect it to be a mobile game, and I can't remember the name of it. Uh, Sayonara Wild Hearts. That's it. Sy- yeah, remember we kept hearing about this game? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought that for sure was going to win, and Call of Duty Mobile beat it. Oh. Uh, best independent game, Disco Elysium, once again. Uh, best games for Impact, uh, Gris. Best game direction, Death Stranding. <laughs> best fresh indie game, this is for that category that is only for um, a first-time Developer, you know, this yeah. is your first video game, Disco Elysium again. So you can see the trend here. Disco Elysium cleaned up. Fighting game, Super Smash Brothers. Family game, Luigi's Mansion 3. That one's for you. I like that game. Uh, best esports team, G2 Esports. Best esports player. Uh, this one I thought was actually kind of cool. It was uh, Booga, the, uh, the world champion for Fortnite. The, uh, he might be 17 now, but at the time when he won, he was 16 years old. So... I thought for sure it was going to go to another league player or something like that, so it was cool to see go uh, go to him. Uh, esports Game of the Year, <laughs> League of Legends. Esports Event, League of Legends World Championship 2019. Uh, let's see here. Content Creator of the Year went to Shroud. Congratulations. Communities, best Community Support yeah, Game. Yeah, yeah, let's get the hype music. Destiny 2. Yeah, yeah, Destiny 2. You're back from the dead. Community support. You got, you're killing it. You listen to your fans, fixing everything. You're a game again. <laughs> okay, moving on. Audio <laughs> design, best audio design is Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I was very disappointed in that pick. Uh, best art direction, this is a big one, Control. Congratulations there. Best action adventure game was uh, Sekrio Shadow Die Twice. Uh, best action game, not to be confused with best action adventure game, stupid. was Devil May Cry 5. Awards are stupid. <laughs> and then game of the year the was third. Mickey's game. Go ahead, Mickey. Take it away. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Oh, it wasn't Death Stranding. It's, yeah, you see how I tricked that? It was his, his game. It's his game of the year. Not Death Stranding. Congratulations, Mickey. Thank you, thank you. Uh, surprise! It was a surprise winner. I, I didn't want Death Stranding to win, but I but out of all the nominations, I thought for sure this was like last place. This game from Software, obviously very popular because of Dark Souls and Bloodborne. But I thought this game, I, I don't, I, I personally don't know enough about this game to realize that it had that much pull, but it did, and it won Game of the Year. So congratulations. Um, that was four hours of awards. Uh, as we sat there and watched them, we, we streamed it live, Mickey and I did. Uh, but during that is this is where the show really surprised us was all of the announcements, all of the all of the extra stuff that they that they pulled out of. Just I couldn't believe it. Like this, the amount of news that we received during the Game Awards was on par with an actual convention. Oh yeah, it was on par. I mean, I don't want to sit there and say it was on par with E3, but I almost felt like this show was more enjoyable than E3 this year. So um, let's get into it. I, the first one that they hit us with and one that, Matt, that, that I like, it, it's not a big one, but it's DLC that they announced for um, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. And so we already received some DLC, but this is that second DLC, and it's Rise of the Phoenix. So they're adding Gambit, they're adding Iceman, Cable, Dark Phoenix, that, and that whole story is being played out uh, in Ultimate Alliance 3 uh, if you have the expansion pass. So it looks really cool. I love the Dark Phoenix you know, um, storyline. Obviously, some of those characters are some of my favorites, so adding that to the game really interests me in the point of bringing me back to playing it some more. But, uh, yeah. That was that was pretty cool. That's coming out uh, this uh, this month, late this month. Nice. Maybe the twenty third, December twenty third, I think. Um, and then I'm gonna slide into one that I couldn't believe. I I I, I didn't remember that I ever talking about this game. It's because you just ignore me. Everything that means things to me, you just bury as garbage. Yeah. Well, you throw it to the side as unimportant. That's fair, but <laughs> <laughs> but this one I, I it, it started off with hundreds of thousands of sharks die every year, and I was like, man, I feel like this is this is a trending topic because we were killing sharks in Sea of Thieves, and that I was watching us on stream, and he was mad at us, and then now all of a sudden I'm watching something about killing more sharks, a lot of them. 
I'm like, and I think my reaction on stream was like, oh, Dead Eye's not going to like this. And then it turns around, it's like, now it's their turn. And all of a sudden, yeah. it's just sharks just messing up everybody i mean just just everyone and so yeah. i'm like the i'm, I'm instantly go from like oh he's not gonna like this to oh man oh my god <clears throat> where's dead eye get dead eye here right now he needs to see this my shark ten senses were actually tingling at home yeah and so this is done a game done by tripwire it's called man eater and it literally is you playing <clears throat> sharks destroying humans all over the ocean, out of the ocean on like golf courses and and land, and just just it, it looks it looks ridiculous, but it looks fun. It looks really fun. You can evolve your sharks. You can do all sorts of cool things, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm pumped. I think this is gonna be a fun game to play uh, that that I can get into. And here's the big news: it's coming to all consoles, including. The Switch. I know. So this was a game that I want to say two years ago was shown off in the PC portion of E3. And I'm like, oh, man, an RPG where you get to be a shark and murder people? It looks like Jaws Unleashed brought up to 11. I was so excited. And then I was like, wait a second, this is a PC show. I'm never going to play this. I don't play games on the computer. And so during the Game Awards, you guys were texting me. You're like, man, eater. I'm like, yeah, it's a real shame. It's uh not coming to consoles, and then you guys are like, yes, it is. I'm like, what? And so like, <laughs> I'm like Googling, and like, I'm supposed to be watching a movie with my wife, and she's like, uh, what, are you, what are you doing over there? Can you put your phone away? And I was like, no, this is important research I'm doing. <laughs> Very I need important. to know. Very important research. And so then I found the new trailer at the end where it shows Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch logos at the bottom, and I was just <laughs> elated to know that this is something that I – I thought was going to pass me by just because of where it was being released. And now that I know I could either get it on PlayStation or Switch, uh, that I'm just, I can't wait. I'm so excited. And that comes out in May of 2020. Yeah, as I was saying, you don't have to wait that long. May nope. 22nd. Oh, okay, our next uh, piece was we did get to see uh, a new trailer for Final Fantasy VII Remake. It looks gorgeous. And, of course, the, uh, the big news was that it also is getting a uh, March 3rd, 2020 release date so not only did we get to see some more gameplay some more cutscenes, but we also got um a better time frame because i think we had that's for the first episode well yeah yeah of course it's episodic and and who knows how that's all gonna play out but we're gonna you're gonna start march 3rd 2020 so um you know that'll be it'll be good for all those fans of final fantasy 7 they're looking looking to play it in this new beautiful form you know it's obviously not a game that i'm like dying for but it, i don't know i might check it out we'll see but it looks really nice then came along some news and i can't even explain to you how how broken i became once i realized what was happening and I see it in the I see it in the uh, the conversations right now. Master of Puppets in in our mixer chat right now is talking about how it needed to be. They needed to keep this information until the end of the show, and I I agree because after that I was just like you. I could not really focus on anything that was happening because I couldn't believe that the new Xbox just got announced on the video game awards. Xbox Series X. And then I couldn't, these little orbs were floating around. And if you're watching us on live on Mixer every Monday night here, then you're, you're actually getting to experience it right now behind us. But these orbs were, were just twirling around, and then it turned into this halo. And I'm like, what is this? And then you see this grill. All you see is a grill with a green light. And I'm like, this is the new Xbox. And I remember Miggy being like, what? How do you know that? I'm like, this is the new, this is the new Xbox. Like, this is it. It's happening. I couldn't believe it. But that's exactly what we got. We got we got to see this new rectangular cube looking Xbox. We got the name, and then we got Phil Spencer to take the stage and talk a little bit about this thing. So we received the new Xbox Series X that um, you know it's going to be coming out holiday 2020. We still don't know a lot about it. We'll find out more. But they did flash a controller with it. And that controller definitely had a few new looks to it. And so, and this obviously, when we saw Halo right here, too, when we, and, and then it locked inside of a rectangle, it all started to add up what, what, what we were about to get here. But the, the deal is, 
The controller is a little bit smaller because they're learning from their elite controller and they're learning about accessibility and they went from 95% uh, of people can use this controller to 98% now is what they're saying because of the way they just slightly adjusted the controller. They added a share button in the middle where you know, we don't have to jump through software programs to get to your share. They redesigned the D-pad to basically be a lot more like what the D-pad is on the elite controller. Oh, you mean to be a functional D-pad? A functional D-pad, okay. yep. And so they, a lot of this was, you know, was learned from the elite controller and the fans giving them feedback. The next thing that happened, though, this is it, it, like I was already happy. I was already in shock. I was already thinking about when can I pre-order this thing, and then they're like, okay, well, we want to show you something about a game that you didn't know we were working on. From a little company called Ninja Theory. And I'm like, oh man, Ninja Theory was work like in my head, I'm like, Ninja Theory's working on a new IP. Ninja like I know they're working on some stuff. And then they go in-game, in-game footage, like in-game engine capture is what you're about to watch. I'm like, okay, sure. And it cuts to water. You start heading towards an island, and I I'm like, my jaw hits the ground. I'm like, this is amazing looking and then you get to these rocky mountains and like sand and dirt and stuff you see you know you see what looks like a volcano erupting it cuts to a woman in fire and you're like this is this isn't is this the game like i kept looking at myself i go are they cutting between like footage and then game footage like life real life footage and then game footage and there's this woman and she's chanting she's chanting and it's getting closer and closer to her and her her teeth, her gums, her just her face. Like I'm sitting there and I'm like, is that a real person or is that part of the game? And then they clarify that it's all in game footage and I'm just like, holy shit. It's insane. This is insane. This is Xbox Series X and I am losing my goddamn mind right now. It looked amazing, you guys. If you're not watching us live, then you're missing out. Go go research this right now and look up Hellblade Cinema Saga. Hellblade 2 is what basically got announced. Something that, again, we didn't realize was happening. We didn't realize they were working on it. This trailer was a world premiere, obviously announced with the Xbox Series X. And it, I mean, this should have been the anchor. Like, how did the Game Awards convince Phil Spencer and Microsoft to announce all this right here when just two weeks earlier, two or three weeks earlier, they had their London show, Xbox owned show, where I really thought is where they were going to drop this information. They saved it for the video game awards. It was pretty wild. It was it was groundbreaking for me. I was like I didn't know what to do with myself. Like I, I was uncomfortable because I was so excited. I was so amped up that I'm like I, I, Mickey thought I was broken for a second. He was broken. I was broken. <laughs> and the rest of the show was great for me because I was on that high, man. Like, I'm on that high. I'm like, holy shit. I love the look of the new system. I, the, the Hellblade looked amazing. Those, the in game graphics uh, to me were, I was just like, they're going to look even better when I put them on a 4K HDR screen. They're going to look even better when I have them right in front of me and I'm already sitting here drooling over them through a stream, through Mixer at 1080. And I'm still sitting here like, whoa. We're, we're, we, are, we are advancing. Like, I, I don't know what the PS5 is going to do, but, I'm, but this next generation is going to be very exciting if this is the quality level of gaming that we're going to get, the visual, at least the visual standpoint of this, of this gaming. What did you? What was your thoughts when when you heard when? Because you, you didn't watch the event live. Correct. Like I said, live. I was watching a movie, so I was you know as announcements were coming out, I was like, hey, you, you watch your movie. But yeah. you and I always make fun of this event. Like yeah. I feel like we definitely rip on this event. This event grew up a lot for me this this time. Yeah. And this announcement showed me how serious people consider the Game Awards. I remember, what was it three to four years ago when the whole thing was like sponsored by Gillette or Schick? And it was just a bunch of it razor so blade bad. ads the whole time. It just felt so corny and cheap. They even had the the chick like um like mascot. mascot yeah, there. it, oh, it was so really bad. bad. But this, you know, over the last couple of years, it's really felt a little bit more big league. It's felt more of an impressive show. The presentation has come across more like a, a real awards show. 
uh, that you would actually see on TV. So it's actually become a respected part of the gaming calendar. And, and I, it is worth getting excited about every year to at least know that we're going to see some new trailers and some announcements are going to be made. And this was a big splash for the Game Awards as a night on the gaming calendar for the year that we could know that hardware could even be you know shown off here. Yeah, I um, I couldn't believe it. Like, there was no thought in my mind ever going into this event that I thought something like this was going to happen as far as, an, as as far as Xbox not only beating PlayStation to the punch. I don't think anyone expected it, and I think that's probably why Microsoft was like, "Let's do it." Yeah. No one's going to see this coming. PlayStation hasn't stepped up and done anything. Now's our chance. Let's go ahead. Let's just let's get it out there. The most powerful system ever made. Blah blah blah. Now we don't know what the PS5 is going to be exactly yet, so this statement could not be true very soon. But they're claiming without without the details being fully explained, they're claiming four times the power of the Xbox One X. That's crazy. Right out the gate, and they're also claiming that the, that the Series X, the naming convention, means that this is the start of something. Yeah. So Series X is one system, but there's the rumors of a of a cheaper version coming out later. That's going to be you know Series S or, as an example that might be half the price and not as powerful, but maybe it's more cloud based pro um, performance. Mm -hmm. Anyways, like they're, they 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 have a a road they're traveling right now where in their in their minds they know what the series you know Xbox series is going to be in the next 5 to 8 years yeah and so that's exciting to me because this thing looks a lot like a PC and some people might hate that but I love I love the form factor of this because it's not the Xbox One X was the most powerful console ever made but it was also compact it was like how small can we make this thing the form factor of this and what Phil and them have said is literally like we we are trying to make something that is special that is that that is exactly what it's supposed to be powerful and and because of that they made this this box that yeah it's not the smallest thing but it's also not flashy it's that thing that you're supposed to sit to the side and it's supposed to fade away and you're supposed to just drip, fall into your games that look better than ever when it comes to console gaming and with the specs that are rumored when you compare that to to PC, the gap is smaller. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they caught PC, and I'm not saying by the time this thing comes out at the end of next year that the gap won't increase, but the gap compared to, say, when Xbox and PS4 launched yeah. is much smaller. Well, the gap is much smaller in a sense of, I don't think you can buy a PC for $500 that's going to do a very good job at doing what the right. Xbox Series X is going to be able to do. I think you're probably paying twice as much in a PC yeah. that would have the capabilities. Yeah. Now, I haven't expressed this since it was announced. Was that Thursday it was announced? Right. It looks stupid. You don't like the look of it? It looks like an air filter, man. Man, I'm okay I with don't, it. I don't... Apple invented this... How, how many years ago did Apple have the trash can computer that everybody bought? Because people are crazy people. I'm okay with it. So I I you know I understand that this was designed for functionality which I can appreciate because you know 360 all the heat and the the, yes. the crash issues if you build something to just work I can appreciate that and we are moving in a world where a lot of gamers do have a setup like yours you have a you have a streaming station you have a a, a gaming chair you have a whole area of your house for gaming I would likely purchase this and hook it up in my living room on my best TV. And to me, it's it's not sexy. It's not appealing to have integrated with my TV system. And it's. I'm curious to know what the actual dimensions are going to be. They said something about roughly one controller wide and three tall. Yeah. I'm even trying to figure out, like, how, how do I make this fit? How do I make this look good? And well, I get it. It can lay sideways, by yeah. the way. I get it, the era of something needing to look like a DVD player or a VCR, like that era is gone. Um, but the what, what I said to a couple other people who I had this conversation with is if, if that comment of slipped into the background is true, if this comes with a really functional home streaming system, you know, like we've seen xCloud already in action. But if, if you tell me that I could tuck this in my front room 
uh, where I'm a little less worried about it, and then my big 65 inch TV mounted on my wall, it's going to be able to cast to that. You know, it's going to work over the internet to that TV seamlessly, and the gameplay is going to be really good. I won't care at all what this thing looks like. It could be the size of an actual trash can that I plug into my garage if I have access to it throughout the house and it, it works well. But for for me, I don't know. I was a little disappointed with the actual design of it. I look at it in the way that it's it's basically a and and I saw this again in by uh, Master of Puppets again in the um, mixer chat. It, it's a small form PC fa- like yeah. size, and that's and and it's clean. It's just it's simple. There's an Xbox button that glows, and then there's a there's a slot for a disc, yeah. and that's it. Which, by the way, there's a slot for a disc, so that's a good sign. I, I did like that, <laughs> but at the same time, like it's okay. I don't need. Like yes, do I? Does my right now my Xbox One X is a flashy Gears Five system? Yeah, and my PlayStation is a, is a Spider Man system. But it's okay that my my Xbox One X Scorpio that I have is very plain. Yeah, and it's fine. So I like this in that sense that it really just kind of plays into that form factor of clean, simple. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it looks it looks in a way it looks elegant. Uh, without having to be too have too many lines, and I think it looks blocky. I, I don't know, like as it is, it's just a rectangle. It's just a box. Yeah, but I think in this it's day a, and it's age, it's a tall you, GameCube. In, in this day and age, where you go buy like like your humidifier that's on your desk at work is a goofy little like teardrop. Yeah, it's designed to have style. It doesn't have to be that style. Correct. It could just be a standard humidifier, but it's, it's not. Yeah. So you know, like I think it's okay that it has its unique look. And it's the same way I felt about the GameCube. I liked the GameCube mm-hmm. to an extent. I, I thought the limitations of the disc and things like that w- were choices. This is going to take a normal disc from what we know. <coughs> but at the same time, I liked the form factor because it was different. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just that that generic box that we always get. And I feel like the Xbox One was that, I mean, especially out the gate, was yeah. the most generic box you could possibly think of. It got better over over the the versions. Who knows what this thing's going to mold itself into as time goes on? Yeah. And also, I kind of interested in that form what a limited edition system would look like. What you could do with it, having those having those you know those different panels like that. What could you, what you could do with that type of uh, form factor. I'm really curious to see what the PlayStation 5 is going to look like. There were some alleged leaks that uh, were thrown around in our Discord today because I am... That was a render. That was yeah. an alleged that wasn't was, an alleged oh, that, leak. Oh, I thought it was That a was a leak. render. They keep calling it a render. It's not official. It's not yeah. a leak. It was someone that that crafted it and it looks really good. Yeah. Like if that was it, yeah. I'd be okay with it. Because I am working with a very restricted space on my where I'm going to have my TV mounted and the dimensions of the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, like I'm going to be taking measurements and make sure like which one of these would work better air airflow wise cuz I'm fitting it on a shelf behind my TV. So that that could actually be a factor that if this actually works in the space and the PlayStation 5 won't, maybe I will be pulled into this. Yeah. So I know there's other people like Owl Zero, not a fan of the of, of the design. I I like it, in the sense of just simplicity and and it, it works. The thing I want to, and I think you do too, is I want to see one, because yeah. like they tell you three three controllers by one controller, and like in your head you think you have it figured out, but realistically until you see this thing, you know, you really don't have that full like real vision of it. Yeah. And so I'm curious what. What it's actually going to look like. I'm really happy with it, and I'm also very excited with what what little again, very little wasn't gameplay, but what we saw that was in theory pulled from an Xbox Series X was ground was groundbreaking. Oh no me. doubt, it was groundbreaking. That was the that was the one part I got very excited for. And again, I'm not necessarily an Xbox fan, and the fact that I only own an original Xbox, you know, I, I just. So there's a limitation to my excitement because until I know what PlayStation's going to do, I'm not even seriously considering buying yeah. a Series X. But if PlayStation comes out and craps the bed, then it, then I'll probably make the jump. Yeah. So my and my excitement level is sort of hindered by the fact that I'm just not as excited about the brand as you are. Yeah. And the last right, and I'm very much. I mean, I'm very much full blown Xbox now. I, I've made that I've made that move to Xbox and I'm really happy there. I've been really happy. And so my PlayStation hasn't been turned on in quite a while. Yeah. It's been Xbox and PC gaming and Switch, right? So 
the thing that I like about this, and this will be my last point, and we can get moving on because there is more to talk about in this show that was very impressive, um, is the form factor, once again, and they talked about it, is it's a, it's a tube, right? And the idea is it, it's a, the, the fan that's inside of it is just shooting all the heat out the top. Mm-hmm. You know? And so the cool thing, too, was when they turned it on, the fan on the inside glowed green. It was just a nice touch of Xbox, of what that that green, that that love that you get to know uh, of the Xbox brand, and so it just makes sense to me when I look at that system. I go, I really think they thought this out. They, you know, like they've put so much engineering into the Xbox One X, and short of like just bad luck on some systems because you have a fail rate, you didn't have problems with the Xbox One X because they 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 designed that, they engineered that. To be something, to be a workhorse that that lasted, they they took that same concept and they shifted it to Series X and said, "We're going to put the same amount of effort into this. It is going to be a workhorse, but it is also going to be something that works properly, that doesn't overheat, that's not you know a complete disaster." Mm-hmm. And again, we won't know until it's out. But from the looks of it and the concept of it, it makes complete sense. That you're like, wow. Unlike a traditional, like you said, DVD player that's trying to pump heat out the sides or out at the back out of a small grill or something, this thing is really designed in a smart way if, again, if you're standing it vertically. Mm -hmm. um, That makes sense as to this thing's going to breathe really well. It's going to move heat very well. So, which has been a, is always a scary thought of any electronic is getting, you know, getting rid of heat and keeping, keeping, uh, you know, uh, temperatures at a, a reasonable place. So from a CPU on a PC to your switch, making sure, you know, that it doesn't overheat and, and the thermal and your thermal paste and all that stuff start cracking and then you're screwed. Yep. So, all right. Anyways, Xbox Series X, really cool. Hellblade 2, very cool to see. And then they didn't stop, they didn't stop the punches because right out the gate, right after that, um, PlayStation had to, had to come back and at least have a presence there, and they showed off a Gearbox production, not developed by Gearbox, but they but they produced it. They had they had their hands in on it, and um, they announced Godfall for both the PlayStation Five and Epic Game Store. It's described as a looter, a loot slasher game with third person real time melee combat. Uh, it's due out in the 2020 holiday season, so it should it looks to be a launch title for the PS Five. And it looked amazing. Like the armor looked so cool, and and you know you're you started to kind of look at like what was going on. There's three people. They're all decked out in some really special armor. One of them grabs a sword, and it, you know kind of they they can charge the sword up, kind of like power it up, light it on fire, and they're they're all talking about like just preparing for something, and then they look forward and you see this beam of light come down, and above above them up this pillar comes down this like triple headed just dragon creature that looks crazy and then it just cuts and says godfall (laughs) so they brought out the developers at that point and then they're like it's a loot slasher and we're revolutionizing the loot side of it we're gonna make it fun we're gonna make it exciting Mm -hmm. and so of course they bring in gearbox um uh, people and talk about it like well you know that were famous for looting and loot shooters. So of course, when they wanted to, t- we wanted to team up with these guys making Godfall. That we helped them develop this game in the sense of how to create a well balanced, fun looting, but slasher, not shooter. Yeah. So that that close combat melee aspect with looting involved, I'm like, man, this really gives me that sense of like how how I was excited about Destiny the first time I saw Destiny. Yeah. That's that was my first thought. I was like. Ooh, this could be really cool. New IP. Like, could this be that next thing that I go sink a ton of time into? Counterplay games. Sorry, that was that was the yeah. developer. So um it looks it, again, it wasn't gameplay, but cinematically it looked really cool. And you could see like the again running off the PS5, there's a lot of potential there. And uh yeah. I, I want to know. I want to learn more about Godfall and the fact that it's going to be a launch title. And all of a sudden, gets me a little more interested in being like, "Well, am I getting an Xbox and a PS5, or just an Xbox?" So I know I'm getting an Xbox because of Halo. 
Yeah. I can't I can't <clears throat> not get a day one Xbox. I need it. I need Halo. I've been waiting forever for Halo. I need it. Even if it's another disappointment, I have to at least try. But yeah, Godfall looked really cool. Oh, then we, uh, we do you have anything on Godfall? Looks cool. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things, if I end up going PlayStation, I'll probably play this because a loot slasher sounds fun to me. Like, just put those two things together and go, sounds cool. Yeah, I liked, you know, when I heard loot, I, I was like, oh, another loot shooter. And then they're like, loot slasher. And I was like, oh, okay, a little different twist. And then they talked about how they were going to change looting. Didn't tell us how, <clears> but the, the fact they were working on it, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll be looking out for you at E3. For sure. Assuming that's when we'll probably find out a lot about these games. If they're going to be truly uh, launch titles, we're going to learn a lot at E3. Oh, yeah. If we if we get out of the E3 season and I don't have a good vision of the launch lineups for both of these new systems, I'm going to be upset. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Nintendo had some cool news when they announced Bravely Default 2 coming to the Switch. This was, uh, this was some... Uh, these nice news for your RPG fans and and especially of that franchise. Um, sometime in 2020 is the potential release for it. But uh, I I'm not a bravely default player. I know we have people in our community like Chops and them that that have really enjoyed this franchise. That I'm sure are very excited to see a, another game and the first of its kind to come away from the 3ds. Mm-hmm. So let's see here. Uh, any what's what's another one that we wanted to talk about? The one, the one game that really grabbed me in this that I didn't expect to and uh, is was called Sons of the Forest. The oh, trailer yeah. starts off where it's just some like soldiers on a helicopter. I was like, oh, cool, another generic Call of Duty knockoff. You know, like who cares? And the helicopter crashes, and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, the the they're in the woods and they're fighting what are sort of alluded to be like demons. And I'm like, oh, there's, there's this game looks like it has really good tension. Uh, it, it instantly had me hooked with the world that it's built. And Player One, Mickey, you said this is a sequel to a game that's already out that I don't know anything about. Yeah, yeah, this is a sequel to uh, The Forest. Uh, in the first one, um, you crash land on uh, on a deserted island or on an island. Um, your son gets taken, and then you pass out. And then the whole premise of the game is you have to track down the crew. And you have to uh, find your son, Timmy. Um, and all the while, you can, like, build and craft stuff. You can build a house. You have to, like, hunt for food and all of that. Um, but all the while, while you're doing that, you have to uh, worry about the cannibals that are on the island. And there isn't just one type of cannibal. There's, like, different cannibal tribes. They have different intelligence. Um, and then there's also, like, creatures that are on the island that even frighten the cannibals. And the more you build, the more you tear down on the island, the more uh, attention that you get from the inhabitants on the island. Yeah, this was cool. It's available on PlayStation, which I didn't know that. So I may actually have to keep an eye out for a deal on the forest because this, like, I'm not a survival horror person, but this is this has building and this this I don't know stressful. Do you have PS4? It, I'm sorry, I do have a PlayStation 4. It's on sale right now. I believe I think it's like eleven, twelve dull hairs. Mm-hmm. Um, I have it on PlayStation. I'll, I'll, I'll gladly play with you. Ooh. Oh, wait, it's co-op? Yep, two-player co-op. Whew. Oh, boy. It looks cool. Oh, boy. I don't know if your heart can take it, Grim. Oh, boy. Don't do it to yourself. Oh, boy. Um. All right, <laughs> yeah, that, that game was super creepy, and uh, I had that same thought of, like, what are we, what is this, another shooter? And then it took a turn, really weird turn. Yeah. Um, imp- uh, is it Empyrean, the, the Journey Ahead, which is the new uh, DLC hitting Warframe? Yeah. Looked really cool because it's adding like pirate uh, themes to space, and looked pretty cool. That that dropped like I think the same day as the show, so that was pretty cool. But another one that was very interesting, we it showed us very little, but the world that we were watching was gorgeous. Is Prolong, and uh, that is the Player Unknown announced yeah. their next project. Uh, it's a bit of a mystery just what Prolong is right now, but the website provides the following explanation, uh, which is it is an exploration of new technologies and gameplay. Our aim with this game is to give players unique and memorable experiences each and every time they play. They did came they did come out la- uh, later and say this is not a sequel to PUBG. This is something completely different, and um, yeah, it, you know, super cool. So. 
They also dropped for uh, Fortnite right then and there. They dropped that they were adding a bunch of skins for Star Wars. So it was it was like they added Ray, Finn, a Sith trooper, and uh, new gliders, new harvesting tools. All that stuff dropped, and that was uh, that was super cool. That was something that Miggy and I literally were like, while we were streaming, while we were watching on a separate screen, <laughs> we're logging into Fortnite and we're buying skins because I'm like, oh my god, I need it! It's Star Wars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Then uh, another company came out and just uh, surprised us all because they just had a ton of announcements, and then they brought more out, and that's Riot Games. Coming back, coming out with Riot, really really starting to show us what Riot Forge is going to be, this, this new team, mm -hmm. this new de department of Riot. And they showed off the Ruin King and Convergence, which are going to be two story-driven games based around... Um, Echo for convergence, where you're going, you're you're trying to save, uh, save time basically. And then the Ruin King is um, courtesy of Airship Syndicate and published by Riot Forge. Uh, it's basic establishing publishing group from Riot that sets to develop games in the League of Legends universe. Riot Forge also, uh, like I said, announced Convergence, another game set in the League of Legends universe. Players will explore the spectacular world of is it Zan. As Echo, a young inventor with an ingen ingenious device to manipulate time, follow Echo's journey, a fan favorite of LOL Champion, as he discovers that the po what the power to change time comes with many consequences. So, they both look really cool. The art style was really neat, and uh, yeah, it was. It's exciting to see the League of Legends kind of turn into something more than just a MOBA. Because the lore is there, the characters are there. It's kind of like that same thing that we keep saying about Overwatch that we'd love to see more mm -hmm. than just Overwatch be Overwatch. So, um, we did get a new Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance, which uh, looked looked all right, looked cool. Kind of remind me of Noobs and Dragons our, our podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, but my disappointing news of the show would have been we got a new trailer for Ori and Will of the Wisps. It was beautiful. It was amazing. And then the date dropped. And I believe I turned to Miggy. I was like, Miggy, that date seems wrong. And Miggy was like, no, I think it's always been that date. And I'm like, I don't know. Maybe it has. And then sure enough, turns out it's a month delay. So it was a February release, which is what I thought. It got pushed a month to what was in March 11th, I think, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so it's okay. <laughs> I'm completely fine with it. If they need that month to do something to make sure the game's ready, fine. But it is a disappointment to me because I was ready for that in February. You got another one that you wanted to talk about? No more heroes. I, think... <laughs> I wasn't going to talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> it was an interesting trailer. I'll give it that. That Ooh. was it. Was a really unique trailer. Um, I'm not gonna lie. The fake trailer had me more excited than one than when I realized what it really was. Uh, but but no more heroes three did did get a, a cool trailer. Um, I only have one other one that I care about, and that would be um, um, Magic Legends. We got announced, which is going to be which a, looked the the cinematic trailer was very interesting. Yeah, really cool, and it's going to be an MMO action RPG. Yeah. So, I mean, like, here's... I've always loved... This is another thing. I love magic. I love the characters. I love the world building, but I'm not a big, like, fan of the card game anymore. I just don't play... I just don't play card games as much, and I definitely don't play magic. So, for me, it was like, okay, here's a way that I can enjoy magic without the card game. Mm -hmm. And and so it's that same idea that I think people could get excited about the Riot stuff that aren't excited, that, that don't play MOBAs. So um, it looked really cool, and we um, we get to see that as far. You can sign up for the beta now uh, over at uh, magicthegathering.com, but uh, they didn't give us anything really further besides that. Uh, I was very drawn into the trailer for New World, which is the one where there's, like, this power that can create life and death that people are constantly like waging war and trying to to get to and i i have no idea what the game's gonna be but i was just really into the trailer so i'm excited to know more about that one yeah the trailer was really cool and we know that it's um an amazon amazon's first yeah. like production you know they're gonna start producing games so you want to know more about it. The, definitely the idea of like this weird thing that's drawing people to it because they want the power and it's corrupting them and it creates an army. Like the whole, the whole, uh, 
Yeah. The whole premise, premise, the whole trailer just definitely screamed to me. It screamed like Dungeons and Dragons. It screamed the famous franchises that I know, but it's a, but it's new. Yeah. And so that's why I'm excited about it is that, ooh, this could be this next game kind of like Godfall could be. I'm, I'm excited that we're seeing new, truly new IPs that, uh, that look cool. And actually, uh, I was reminded in the mixer chat. I, I, I lied; that was not my last one. Um, the the um, announcement that the Telltale Games uh, was has been resurrected gave me hope that I might one day see this. And that is the Wolf Among Us Two. Got a trailer, very teaser, very short, but it got a trailer, and it was there. And I'm super happy that uh, that you know the. The proper voice actors are back and everything. This is a game that I honestly actually didn't play the first one. I watched the entire game as my wife played it, almost like it was a movie, and I enjoyed it so much. That then I found, you know, I've learned that it was based off of a graphic novel, and I got into that. But the fact that there's another game out uh, or coming out is uh, is exciting. So I'm I'm pumped that that got announced. Um, I don't know if you were aware of this, but this should make you a little bit happier. Um, the same developer, that the team that worked on the first one, um, they formed a their own studio and yeah. they got contracted to work on this. Yeah, so that's you know and that was the big question when the Telltale name kind of got pulled back around, even though it's not the same company, but the name's being used. They started to wonder, well, these projects are going to pop up. Are you going to give the people that were working on it the opportunity to continue to work on it? Mm-hmm. And it turns out that. That they that they are, which is pretty cool. So, um, you're just gonna you're just gonna breeze over your future game of the year I, gears uh, tactics. So gears yeah. tactics, it's a prequel to gears. Yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not a tactics guy, so that's why this one's uh, it, it it pulls me to the point where I want to try it, but I worry that I like it's something like a 30 hour game. And so, like, for me, I'm like, I don't think I can put that much time into... That's just you not playing Fortnite for one week. No, I don't think I can do it, though. Tactic <laughs> games just don't hold my attention. Maybe. 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 Yeah, I, um, I guess you're not a real Gears fan. I like it. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> I'm going to buy it, and I'm going to play it. It's just my, my concern is, is that if the story's really good, yeah, you're going to drag you're gonna yeah. drag me through a game style that I don't normally play, and maybe I'll like it. But for me, I, I don't like the... Slow. I don't. I don't know how to explain tactics. It's just not my style. I don't want to. I don't want to try to explain it. I don't fully understand it because I don't play it. So I'm trying to be fair. Just not my style. Well, you so, don't also. You also don't necessarily care for turn based games. Well, that, yeah, and that's what I'm, you're right. Tactics it's a, it's a turn, pacing. Yeah. yeah, it's a pacing, it's a pacing thing, thing. Absolutely. And you know, so and I played. Uh, what was it, uh, Mario and Rabbids, right? Yeah, you like that, and that was okay. Like I was like, so again, if you could put me in the right setting, I will put up with it, and I will enjoy it to an extent. Especially if some of the mechanics break break the turn based rules a little bit, which mm-hmm. Mario and, and Rabbids did. Yeah. So, um, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. It, it is interesting. It comes out uh, what April next year. So, um, we'll, we'll see uh, how that how that goes. I did see something in the chat. Someone asked me if I'm going to talk about Ghost of, uh, was it Tushahima or whatever? Tsushima. Tsushima. Mm-hmm. Got, got that Japanese Ghost, silent Ghost tea. of Tsushima. Yeah, yeah Tsushima. There we go. Um, this game has never excited me. This trailer was better because it actually explained what was going on. Mm-hmm. I agree. But it's just this game is, and I like Sucker Punch. I like the developer. I've, I've loved Infamous. There's not going to be too many times you're going to listen to this show and hear either of us get really excited about a samurai-themed video game. It's just a genre that I, I'm not interested in personally. I'm just like, oh, okay. Yeah, and I think um, I think the problem, too, is that we're seeing a samurai-like surge. So I'm kind of already feeling overwhelmed with samurai games. Like, we, got, we had multiple samurai games announced in this show alone. And so, like... To me, it's like, is, is this the next zombie like push where we're just going to get a ton of samurai games to the point where they flood it and just kill it? This game might be great because it is Sucker Punch. It is first party, you know, for Sony. Uh, it's an exclusive. It, it, you know, it looks pretty. I give it all that. There, there is a game coming out. It might be a PlayStation exclusive game. I can't remember that it's like a samurai game, but it's in modern day Japan. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. Like, that one like, I'm more interested like, in, yeah. Feudal Japan is not a subject matter I'm at all interested in. So I think samurais are super cool. 
I just I I'm not motivated enough to be excited in any way about these games. Yeah, I, Ghost to me, I, you know, I, I need to know more. Like, I like the idea that that what we learned um, over the event here at the Game Awards was. Here's a guy, looks like his village was attacked. He survived. He became a ghost, right? He became the crow. It's kind of what I feel like. Yeah, he got yeah, this, yeah, yeah. He became the crow. And he's going to get this I'm sold on buying it now. Now you call it like the crow? Yeah, right? If this was called the crow and it was that, I'd, buy, I'd be game, day one by. But anyways, he gets, you know, gets that chance. He becomes a badass. He starts to hunt them all down and basically try to get his revenge. And... Like I'm okay with all that. That story works for me. It's 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 that it's a tra- it's a very traditional John Wick style story to me. I could get behind it. It's the setting that I just don't care about. Yeah, unfortunately. And I like ninjas. It's not even that I don't like ninjas. I actually I don't like ninjas. That I much. like samurai swords. I like that concept. I'm but, a pirate guy. But it just I don't know for some reason it's not grabbing me. And the videos that we have seen of like some of the mechanics, I'm like. It's wishy-washy for me. I don't know if, I, from what I've seen, if I like it or not. I really, what I want to do is uh, this coming year when we get to go to like PAX East or whatever, when I'm sure the PlayStation booth at that point will have it, um, where you get your hands on it. I'm sure at that point we can um, get get a real like opinion on it and say I was wrong. If if I want to ride around on a horse and attack people with a sword, I'm just gonna play Breath of the Wild because this trailer was just cutscenes. And a dude rolling up on a horse with a sword. Like, that's what yeah. it was. I'm like, it like it did invoke, like, oh, maybe it's just the theme of riding on a horse. Maybe think of Breath of the Wild. But it wasn't, it didn't make me think of Breath of the Wild in the right way where I was like, maybe I'll play this game. Yeah. But so, this is the same thing we said about the game when it was announced two years ago at E3. Yeah, but I think the weird thing, though, is I feel like last E3, we actually got to see gameplay. Like, we actually got to see more about gameplay, about Ghost than we did this time. I don't think so. I thought it was a very cinematic trailer the first Maybe time. Maybe it was, Because yeah. that was the year that I really complained about what I kind of feel about this show mm. is there were too many cinematic trailers without any gameplay. And this one did a really good job introducing new intellectual property, but unfortunately it didn't address close enough for me. Just I, I give me 10 seconds of what the gameplay is going to yeah. look like in Engine and then let me get excited then. Yeah. That... that and again, we're not talking about Ghost. Ghost did that. It gave more in-game gameplay footage this time, so that was good. But a lot of these games at the show, yeah. they were just cinematic teasers. And I'm like, well, I can't really get excited because I don't know what kind of game this is. Yeah. Yeah, we got uh, – and then we had a lot of cool um, – um, oh Sp- Spidey says the first trailer was all gameplay, so I don't remember correctly. Yeah. But the first but the first trailer was was it wasn't good. That was the problem. If I, if I remember <laughs> right, it we we saw the trailer. We were like, "Oh God, this looks slow paced. It looks it looks boring." Yeah. You know, and then oh, yeah. and then it got better though. And I feel like this trailer showed it where it almost felt more like Assassin's Creed level style gameplay, where you're like, you know, you're sneaking up across and you jump down and you just jam your sword right down someone's right right down the top of their head. You know, pull your sword out and start fighting. Like it just seemed more uh, action, more exciting versus versus what we saw early on. So, anyways, um, and and that's not to be confused with the other ninja game that that they announced, which was like I forgot the name of it. It was uh, Naraka or something like that. Yeah, Blade Point, um, which that was like just a cra- crazy straight up slash em n- nutty one v one style fighter almost. Oh really? Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't watch that one. Yeah, because I, I hit this show in highlights because I didn't watch it live. I believe like that I believe that's from a, a Chinese uh, developer that's uh, relatively new, so they, hmm. they were kind of making a big deal about that. Uh, we got some good like um, sh- or, um, artists that performed live there from uh, Death Stranding, the orchestra, uh, ch- uh, what was it, Churches and churches. Grimes and uh, Green Day. They all did a good job again for previous years. Where we would make fun of these uh, these uh, these songs that were played and they were just really bad. They, the production value has gone way up. Probably one of my favorite like goofy moments that that really didn't lead to anything super like big as far as announcement goes. It was more of a um, winner for the games for impact category. Was the Muppets whole presentation with um, blending in with the um, 
Untitled Goose Game. Yeah, my man Beaker. I love so, Beaker. Yeah, Beaker. Me, 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 me. I love Beaker. I know. And it's like, uh, so Miggy was the one that was like, I just, because he did the show with me, he was like, I was watching you, and like your reaction to this was just so like real. It was just so like, and I said, you want to know why? I literally started watching this, and I felt like a kid again. And literally, it just took me back and made me feel like a kid. I was like, I grew up lo- loving these these characters. And so for me, it was it was a fun moment to to witness and see done live. And then the way they blended it into the Untitled Goose game or a or the, or the new Untitled Beaker game. Um, yeah. And then they even went into a movie, a, a game trailer of of the Beaker game, where eventually the goose shows up and starts to terrorize Beaker. And then the goose comes into real life in, in puppet form and terrorizes both of them uh, on stage as they try to announce the winner and the goose is trying to steal the uh, the winner card, you know, announcement card and all that stuff. So it was just super fun. Seeing Beaker with a VR headset on was hilarious. It, well done. Very yeah, well done. I'm going to lay it out there. If you don't like the Muppets... Stop. Don't don't bother trying unfriend, to be my friend. Unfriend him. I love the Muppets. Don't, don't bother. They make me happy. Um, now... Earlier before the show, before we wrap this up, I I, I I was a little mean to Player One Miggy. Player One Miggy was saying that last year's Game Awards was better than this year's Game Awards. I told him that was a you stupid really opinion. You really got to throw that fire in there, huh? Yeah, yeah. I told him that was a stupid opinion. Mig- and then I did research. I went back and looked at last year's Game Awards, and Player One Miggy was correct. Thank last you. year's show was way better. Why? They announced Mortal Kombat 11. <laughs> Garbage. Better than any the of the game, other announcements this year. Are you serious? Year. The game that you don't play. Uh, the game, the hot trash. Uh, it's the, not hot trash. Hot I trash. like the game, and I played it for a while. How's the story? The story got bad. Got but bad. The, but got the gameplay was good. It's a fighting game. Stories come second. Uh, by the way, fun story. I was streaming, and frustrated, or sorry, frustrated Canadian was streaming, and I was hanging out, mm-hmm. and he, we were talking about Mortal Kombat. And he goes, oh, Mortal Kombat, wasn't Link in that? And I'm like, you're, mess- you're messing with me, right? And, no- and it turned out he had no idea what Mortal Kombat really was. Yeah. And, and he was thinking Smash Brothers yeah. and, like, and, and Soul Calibur and stuff. And I was just like, I was losing my mind. I was raging out in the chat. I was like, I'm going to unfollow you, man. I'm literally going to unfollow you. How can you? I said, I said you do you know who Scorpion is? He goes, you mean the Scorpion King? And I was like, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, Dwayne. I am done. So, so yeah. I hey, you say the game you don't play anymore. I was going to play Mortal Kombat going. last week, and while I was and sick, didn't I didn't want to get off off the couch, and my disc was in the other room. Let's, hey, it's not good enough for you to do that. Then, bottom line is if that's, that's your, true. if that's his reason why last year's show is better, yeah, I, I, you can't you can't I don't need him you can't on my side stand that. by that. No. What, Biggie, you're bailing on me? I came around. I, I apologize I, for being I, rude to you, and I, I, I come around, and then you sell me out. Production, okay, so, and, and, and we're going to get, let's, let's do this. Let's do this right now, maybe. Okay, okay. Production value-wise of the shows this year was the best it's ever been. And and the announcements were, were shocking in the sense of the Xbox, Hellblade, Godfall. You know, I'm, I'm really re- revolving around those three, okay? Outside of those three, I don't feel like there's anything that's like, holy shit. But those three were groundbreaking things that normally you would never see except at E3. Yeah, but you got those three. You got those three announcements in a three-hour show. In a three-hour show. Give me three announcements from last year. Three announcements from last year. That you didn't look up on Google. I didn't look up on Google. Ha! (laughs) (laughs) Just completely off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) We got... We got announcements for, uh, let's see, uh, Dragon Age, uh, Far Cry. This is before we found out what they really were because everybody was hyped at the end. Wait, 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 wait. You say, you say Dragon Age? Dragon Age. <laughs> Far Cry New Dawn. Hades. No, no. No, Hades. Grim's like that. Grim's like that. Nathan support. looked Mortal fun. Kombat 11. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, The Black Order. The Outer Worlds. Sayonara Wild Hearts. Stranger Things 3, The Game. <laughs> and then we had, and then the, like the whole awards thing. I know the one thing that stuck out for me from last year was the God of War. Uh, when I think, I think it got Game of the Year or whatever. But just that whole, the whole interaction where you had the whole cast up there, and then you know you hear hear the actor go, "Read it, boy." You know that was good. But but, but it was. It, but what about Reggie taking the stage this year? Reggie took that and was literally good. almost making me cry. I know. I, I shed a tear too. 
I shed a tear. I mean, but what I'm what I'm I'm not saying that this show wasn't good. I mean, last year was better, but this show was was it was it was good. You know, a tepid good. I mean, it, I, I did peak, I did peak when uh we saw when we saw the Xbox and when we saw uh, Hellblade, the, um those that and then the whole the Beaker thing. Those three things stuck with me like the entire like since then. I had to go back and watch it and like watching my my like my my own stream footage. I got bored halfway <laughs> through it. I started playing with my phone. I mean, I'm a phone guy, but I mean, I was started playing like with my phone. Like I kind of like stopped paying attention when Green Day came out. I really didn't care when churches. Yeah, but we always really do that didn't. with the with the game awards. That doesn't that you Did, can't penalize that because guess what? Who I'm, who performed last year? I don't know. Who performed the year before that? I don't know. Because it doesn't matter ever. But I'm there's not, never a performance that sticks with you. You can't you can't blame the music of this year. And not say that it's the same problem every year. Yeah, I'm not penalizing it. I'm not the whole thing. And, and I guess I guess I kind of took a detour down this dark path. But what I'm saying is, this show it was a good show. It was it was. I didn't expect it to be that good. By us being the end of a, of a game console life cycle, by us being towards, and I didn't expect us to get fired back. At, you know, back to back. I mean, it, it was it was great that we got that Xbox, and then we got like the, the Hellblade, and we got Godfall. You know, a taste of next year. I didn't expect it to be fire. I didn't expect that. So I mean, by us being at the end, I expect next year to be a lot better because we'll be in the new life cycle. We'll be able to see more of what's coming out in 2021. So um, I mean, we, I'm not knocking. I'm not knocking this. We literally got the next generation of a console. Yes, announced at the Game Awards, and that which was is, great. Which has never been done before. Right. Okay. And so for me, if you're going to sit back here and you're going to hold on to the Outer Worlds last year and you're going to hold on to these games that now have a lot of they have a lot of of ground to stand on now. You're telling me that games like Godfall, games like the uh, Bravely Default 2, games like um, Prologue, games like the Ruin King Convergence, Dark Alliance and uh, let me make sure I get the name right here. Where's it at? New World. These are all brand new IPs that literally sit in the same realm as the Outer Worlds did, the same realm as those games that like the that that we that yes got announced last year, but we knew nothing about them last year. They got announced and we go, "Oh, that that sounds cool." Because we knew nothing about them. So, as far as that list goes, you could almost argue that the that the same announcements of unknown games last year is equal if not higher this year for new IPs that we've never heard of including two that exist in the next generation of gaming that we aren't even in yet. Mm -hmm. So, like, to me, when I weigh that out, I weigh, I give it to 2019 over 2018 easily, especially the fact that we got hardware this time around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but what, what I'm, like I said, what I'm basing this off of is just what I can remember offhand. Like, I couldn't, like, and I Google. can't. I can, well, I'm talking about this year. <laughs> oh, okay. This year, I mean, I'm just, like, I was just thinking about, like, I was sitting there literally trying to think about, what games would be besides the moment we both had our heart attacks? What like stood out to me? No, I can only think of those three things. I mean, I mean those those made an impact on me. After the Game Awards of 2020 next year, I'm gonna be like 2019 was so much better. Man eater, man eater. You know, like, I'm gonna yeah, do that next because year because man eater's gonna win Game of the Year. But you're right, but, you're right. But but in, in all like as far as that comment goes in 2020. Um, when the Game Awards is going on, we will literally be holding on to our Xboxes mm -hmm. and our PS5s, hopefully. Cradling them. Um, so we'll, uh, like, yeah. yes, they could surprise us with what's next, that second layer, but at the same time, I, like, this right now is when we are getting that first layer. And as far as excitement at a launch and a launch title and a launch window, mm -hmm. you know, that is, you only get that once every four you know, seven years, seven, yeah. eight years. So, like, this is right now we're living in a time right now where, where every convention, starting here at the Game Awards, because this because they decided to start it at the Game Awards, moving forward when we get when we get PlayStation Experience, when we get uh, PAX South, PAX East, E3, PAX West, all that stuff happens before November. Every single one of those, Tokyo Game Show, all those. Are going though, right now? We're living in a sweet spot. This is going to be the best year, as far as getting excited for the future. And yes, you'll always have the new Zelda or the or Metroid will finally get announced or or whatever will happen that you'll get excited about because that's just 
game development. But right now we're living in that that the hardware, software, collaboration, everything's brand new. The control what's what's the PS5 controller gonna look like? What's new with the with the Xbox controller? How are these new technologies gonna work with games? You know, all of that is all swirled into one. And the fact that they chose to start this moment at the Game Awards is why I have to give it to 2019 because I never, ever, ever suspe- expected for it to happen here. And that's, that's just me because I'm, when a generation gets here, same thing with PS4 and Xbox One, when that when that realm was happening, that, that era was happening, I was like so focused on everything that was happening in that moment because I wanted to know what the PS4 controller looked like. I wanted to know if the Xbox was really going to cost $800 with a Kinect and, and, and all these things and if, if sharing games was impossible. All these things that were swirling around beyond just the games themselves that were coming out was just so much news, so much excitement, so much decision making to be had. And and yeah, and then, you know, it's a, I don't like to call it a war, but it's it becomes that <laughs> battle of like, this is the starting ground. Who's going to come out the gate? It's it's a horse race. Who's going to come out the gate and get that first that first edge? Are they going to keep it? And then let's go and let's go in the next generation and see how it grows. But yeah, I don't know. I uh, you couldn't before Google. <laughs> you couldn't tell me one thing that happened in 2018. Yeah, I could barely remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. So. That doesn't matter. I'm using this as leverage. <laughs> but that's, that's but that's not that's not my only issue, and I'll probably uh, want to get into it with you in the chat after the show for our you, post show. Yeah, the ads were fucking awful. Okay, I will agree with you on that. But I mean, there wasn't. Uh, I mean, there wasn't enough, like, influencer, like, I mean, not influencer. Oh, yeah. Like, I would like to see it. Like, they did a lot of the awards off screen. So, like, remember. That's last I, year, too, though. I know, but I'm saying it hasn't gotten any better. But I awards? Because it's already four hours long. That's oh. the thing, because you you got mostly ads and stuff going in there. The awards? I want to see awards. I don't want to see 20 minutes first worth of awards, awards for three are, hours. Awards are stupid. First of, <laughs> I agree. I agree. First of all, <laughs> the ads, as, as annoying as they are, are minimal compared to all the world premieres and the interviews with developers and all that stuff that they choose to have in this award ceremony when maybe it should just be awards. Like, if you really want to cut cut the, cut it here, I would be interested if we... I don't want to do this, <laughs> but if we watched the 2019 awards and we timed it out to say X amount of time went to awards, X amount of time went to world premieres and, and interviews, and X amount of time was ads. Challenge accepted. Okay. I, I know what I'm doing this weekend. <laughs> you, if you want to do it, man, do it. But I'm telling you, the world premieres and yeah. interviews of those yeah. developers, which we enjoy, which I enjoy, but really don't need to be in an award ceremony, in my opinion, are why this thing has ballooned into a three, four hour event. And yeah, it is, you're right. By the end of it, you're, you're worn out. You're tired. Your emotions are running high. I mean, they gave us Xbox early on in the show. I was burnt out. <laughs> but you also can't, end, and here's 2019's biggest flaw. You can't end the goddamn show with a Fast and Furious game that looks like it came out in 2002 with Vin Diesel, who looks like he needs a facelift. And, and, like, and, and you could tell the crowd was like, are you fucking serious? Because like Michelle Rodriguez takes the stage. She's like, check this out. And then you go through this trailer. It looks like fucking Grand Theft Auto from the PS1. And then she's like, that's pretty cool, right? Crickets. <laughs> That's what we got. And like the crowd was like, uh, no, no, that was bad. That looked real bad. It was god awful. That like why'd you save that for the end? Did you not watch the trailer? You thought it was something different? <laughs> it was fucking that, she's garbage. like, Oh, I thought I thought we had more Halo footage. I'm sorry, that was the wrong <laughs> clip, but now we're out of time. I hope you buy Fast and Furious. Yeah. So yeah, with that being said, the end the way they ended the show, I was like yeah, you probably should have swapped that with the Xbox news. <laughs> Drop the Xbox at the end, and you would have just blew everybody out of the water. I think that was a pay for spot anyway. Yeah, yeah I'm it, sure. Also, um, can I just make a comment that the microphone was clearly too low because you had everybody leaning over to talk into the microphone, and they're like, "You don't have to lean over," but isn't it natural when your microphone's like way, way down, and you're like, "Well, I just want to talk to you." Yeah, and for it, sure. It's just yeah, it's habit. So like, just raise it a little bit. All right, guys. Well. If you want to talk more <sighs> Game Awards 2019, get in the Discord, get in the Gaming General Check, get in the GameZilla channel, and uh, we will happily continue this debate. And who knows, it may rage on into the post-show. Uh, but we we, we got to get through our gaming uh, moment of the week, and we got to get through our Zilla update. 
because this boy is rolling long. So let's get into that Zilla update right now. Ah, Zilla update. Then I can't go first. Why don't you start <laughs> off? I'm going to go second. So I was very excited. I, I put some time into uh, the, the latest Shovel Knight updates because I own Treasure Trove, which meant last week I was uh, awarded uh, for gr my great deal of patience. I was able to uh, get King of Cards and Shovel Knight Showdown available right there for download. So if you've already bought Shovel Knight, then these games are there for you. You just got to update the game and fire up. And uh, so Shovel Knight Showdown is like a Smash Brothers inspired sort of game where you're collecting jewels and fighting the other people in Shovel Knight. There's a bunch of unlockables. Uh, really fun. It's challenging, just like Shovel Knight is. So if you if you like uh, you know, a party, party fighter, then I recommend you try Shovel Knight Showdown out. And uh, I started playing some King of Cards. And I really like the mechanics of playing as King Knight. He's kind of got a dash and a spin move. Uh, it, it just, when I played Plague of Shadows, I just felt I hated controlling Plague Knight. He just he's flies around the screen with explosives and you throw bombs. And I never felt like I really got control of it. After two levels of playing as King Knight, I was on board and loving the game. I just got to the point where I unlocked the deck of cards to start playing the card mini game. I'm very excited about that. But uh, I don't know. That was really the highlight of my my week is really getting into more Shovel Knight because I'm a big Shovel Knight fan. So uh, I guess that's a quick way to summarize my gaming update. Oh, not this. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Kylo Ren, you've killed me with your lightsaber on this show. Now we're down another co-host. <sighs> you put me out of my misery. Here, hold my saber. Ooh, gladly. Giggity. My gaming moment why, of the why week Why is this was so cold? Yeah, I don't know. It's made out of metal and was it's sitting over the, in the corner. The souls of Jedi <laughs> sucked into this thing. Anyways, my gaming moment of the week has to be Star Wars revolving around the Fortnite event. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was my first ever live event that uh, Fortnite's done. I've, I've never partaked in any of them. So yes... Yeah, I gotta turn that off. <laughs> yes, there were a lot of issues logging in, like everybody was having server problems. I get it. Millions of people were trying to log in the system. I got in. I got. I to, couldn't get in. That game's stupid. Yeah, I got in. I got my glider, and I I glide over to Risky Reels where there's just these giant pedestals, and the the we're sitting there waiting. The countdown hits, and all of a sudden the Millennium Falcon shoots into the world. TIE fighters are chasing it. Imperial ships show up in the sky, and I'm like, oh my god, this is really cool. And we're watching it as the uh, as the Millennium Falcon j takes out these TIE fighters and keep crashing into the world around you. And I'm kind of thinking, huh, that's causing some damage to the world. I wonder what that's going to mean. Then the Millennium Falcon lands, and J.J. Abrams in digital form comes out, starts talking, you know, it's pretty cool. It's a PA system. Everybody can hear him talk. And so we... Uh, we get to answer a couple questions. We get to see the clip of the movie. I'm not going to talk about it because some people are avoiding all all uh, content, but we did get to see exclusive clip. I haven't watched a trailer since the first teaser. Yeah, the clip was really short, and honestly, it was the weakest point of the whole event. Like, even though that was like kind of the big hype around it all, was the clip. So I'd say, eh, it was okay. It was cool, cool how they did it, whatever. But they um, they started asking us questions. So first of all, I was like, what do you think is going to happen in the clip? And yet, and there was these four platforms and people would stand on them. And then they showed the clip. And then they asked, like, we got one more question. What's your favorite color lightsaber? And you go stand on the platform for whatever color you like. And then more, more TIE fighters come in and start shooting them. They're like, we got to go. And they leave, but they forget this box on the platform. So, of course, everybody naturally runs to the box because they're like, oh, my God, they left this box. The box explodes open. And whatever you voted for your color lightsaber, all of a sudden is in your hand. So if I voted red, I had a Kylo saber in my hand. It sounded just like Kylo's just guttural saber. And I'm like, yes. And that's when I realized it's 50 v 50. First one to 100 wins. and Everybody's just, just murdering everybody left and right. And then you respawn back in, drop back down, and you keep going. And it ends, and I'm like, oh, my God, that was awesome. I want to go back in and do it again. Well, you can't. I'm like, okay. Was well, that it really? So I'm like, well, I guess I'll I'll play a solo. You know, no one else was online at the time. I'm like, I'll play a solo, and I drop in the first house I drop on. I hear this weird sound. And I get in the house and I look. There's a weird box, and I'm like, huh, what's this box? And I pop it open, and four lightsabers fall out of it. 
So I grabbed the Kylo Saber again. I'm like, oh, man, this is cool. Actually, I think I grabbed all the Sabers that time because I didn't know better. And I um, pulled the Kylo one out, and I walk out outside of the house, and there's people. And I'm just like, I just start running at them. And they're all running away from me. I'm like, wait, does nobody else have a Saber? That's weird. And I just I'm, I take everybody out, and, and then I move to the next city, and I start everybody I run into doesn't have a Saber. I'm like, is it really only like one box of sabers in the whole game, like per per drop? And I just got super lucky. And then finally I ran into somebody else with a saber and we had a saber duel and it was sweet because you can block and attack. It's not just like super basic. They they actually built some strategy into how to, you know, be decent with a saber in the game. And yeah, it was a lot of fun to the point where all I did all weekend was play the Star Wars Fortnite uh, game and we pulled like four wins out of it and had a lot of fun. I run around with the Kylo Saber anytime I can. And yeah, it was, uh, I was surprised. I didn't think it would be that cool, but they added a bunch of challenges too. So you can unlock new emotes, unlock new icons and stuff, all Star Wars related. If you just achieve certain things with the Saber or, or, um, Imperial blasters or things like that. Cause there the cra- well, I was right. The, cra- the sites where I saw the TIE fighters crash are now crash sites where TIE fighter wreckage is and the, and the um, First Order is sitting there. These NPCs that are the most accurate stormtroopers I've ever seen are just waiting for you. And you have to be half decent to knock them all out because they do land their shots. Mm. So, um, and then when you clear that out, you can raise your banner there, which is another challenge. And then you grab their blasters, and then you have these cool blasters too. So it's a lot of fun. I, uh, I was surprised. And, and uh, Miggy, I know you had a good time with it. Uh, Jazzy uh, had Owl had a good time with it, and uh, BMC jumped in for a bit too. So it was it was fun. Steve O jumped in for a bit too. So it was uh, it was it was cool. That was my game moment of the week. I, I never experienced a in game event like that. It was pretty cool how they shut the game down for an hour and just people got, came in. You couldn't fight each other. You just you came in, you hung out. I was riding, I was running around in my uh, stormtrooper outfit, and. <laughs> It was cool how other a bunch of stormtroopers would come over to me and we'd all like we'd all be dancing like and it would just draw this crowd of like sixty people around us to just watch the stormtroopers dance. But then I would turn and I would notice that all these other people built viewing boxes. So mm. you, as long as you were far enough away from the platform, you were allowed to build, and you had unlimited resources. So they would build these viewing boxes where they were just a bunch of people st- sitting in the viewing boxes waiting for the event to start. It was it was wild. It's like this is a digital movie that people are like gathered around to watch. So, and it just goes right back to the Game Awards where Fortnite creators were sitting there saying we're trying to create this meta world, you know, this virtual meta world where things can happen, you know, in in virtual reality. And it's like this is kind of an example of that. You know, very small scale, very simplistic, but it was impressive the overall scale. Nice. Yep, Miggy, what do you think? What do you got? Give my saber back. Well, uh... <clears throat> Careful. Jeez. Well, my gaming moment of the week has to be this nice little mobile game called... Man Mute. No, I'm just kidding. Fortnite! <laughs> <laughs> and I probably blew out your headset with that. Yeah, a little but, uh, bit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, just take whatever Grimm said and just double that. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> it was a lot of fun getting into it. Yeah, that was my first um, Fortnite event. Um, it was a little bit of a pain trying to get into. I wanted to stream it. Um, and, I mean, Mixer was broken. Um, um, Fortnite was broken for a good, good while, but finally got in there. I um, was able to take part in the event. It was a lot of fun. And then getting those lightsabers. It was a lot of fun, like, uh, learning how to use the lightsabers, learning, you know, like what breaks them, um, what breaks your block. I mean, you can actually block, you can, you can block any bullet, anything that's being shot at you in the game. Um, and then just learning techniques on how to take out people, like how to tag team people. Um, it was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, and then just running with you and the rest of the guys, um, was, was sweet, especially all of us running across the map, all of us with our <laughs> lightsabers in tow. <laughs> people be running for their lives, man. They'd see us coming into town. They're like, get the hell away. Just four sabers. You had a Mace Windu saber, a Luke Skywalker, a Ray, and a and then the Kylo one, and we're all just like, ah. 
<laughs> and we would leave a city, and there would be no like that's the other thing. We would take a take whole everything. city down. <laughs> There'd be a city there, and when we'd leave, it'd be gone. What city? <laughs> yeah, but it was amazing. Like I ran after one guy with like my my uh, crafting weapons, and uh, next thing I know, I just said the Pwah! and went out with my Kylo lightsaber. But he turned around and started running. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's a great feeling when you know you got somebody that can't that doesn't have a saber to match up with you. Man, they they flee real quick. Yeah, they also did a good job with the lightsaber battles. Like if you go head up against somebody with the lightsabers it actually feels like you're in the middle of a jedi fight yeah you can deflect and when you hit you see the sparks and you can do like the side flips backward flips it was amazing and i i, I really want this event to go on forever but i know all things must come to an end yeah it runs it runs for a week so if you haven't played it you can jump you can jump in right now you can play it until the movie comes out then the event is going to end so but yeah it was fun all right, well, that has been episode 291 of the Games of the Podcast. We'd love to talk Star Wars Fortnite and Shovel Knight and Game Awards, all that in the Games of the Media Discord. Don't forget, there are other awesome shows available as part of the Games of the Media Network. Legend of Retro, if you're a retro gaming fan, Noiseland Arcade for our Simpsons fans, Noobs and Dragons, it's our tabletop Dungeons and Dragons storytelling podcast and the Last Action Podcast. So make sure you... Uh, Head to GameZillaMedia.com. It is a website, and you can learn about all of our awesome shows there. And again, one more thank you to our patrons. Thank you so much for supporting us each and every month to keep GameZilla Media happening and the GameZilla podcast in your ears every single week. Oh, I'm dead. It strike me down, and I'll become more powerful than you could ever imagine. Try it. Try it. Try it. No, not the eyes, not the eyes. Remember, we are your Elite Free DLC for all your gaming news. And until next time, game, game on. on. May the force be with you all. Good. <laughs> Miggy's new. Okay, he's, he hasn't done this. Also, look at I can hide behind this. Ah, my face! 